Well, volatility is back in action over on NAB Trade with Brainchip, the big winner. Who would have guessed that? Uh, but rather than give it all away, and because I need to learn more about this myself, I'm joined by Gemma Dale from NAB Trade to tell us more. Gemma, welcome back to Ausbiz. Thank you. Do you know I wouldn't have picked Brainchild to be the big winner? I know you mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's it's back. So big news last week, and anything that's got NASA in it's going to get everybody's attention. So it sort of had all the right elements of an exciting story. And we saw a lot of buying last week. We imagined it would go quiet, right? It wasn't sort of the big hit every day. But it's been extraordinary this week. It's been such a trading stock. It's amazing how much turnover there's been. The bit that blew my mind was looking at yesterday's data. It was the most traded stock by number of trades. That's not uncommon because you often see small stocks traded quite frequently a lot of a lot of individuals this was most traded by number of accounts so it means a really wide range of people Gosh. wanted a part of it and by value so wow the actual total amount traded in this one tiny little thing was across all of those different metrics by far our biggest it's just unheard of to see that kind of thing so it's it's obviously captured people's attention it's the big news at the moment it's the first thing for a while that has pushed the buy now pay later <laughs> off the top, off the top of the pops for the first time it um it's where everyone's interested at the moment well i'm gonna have to bring you back to buy now pay later because this week we saw the listing of Laybuy mm. shot up by 45% I think on its first day of trade. Did your investors care? They were very active on the day it listed. Mm -hmm. So we saw a lot of enthusiasm on that day, lots and lots of trading, plenty of people taking profits as it rocketed. That was lovely. And then absolutely nothing. So ah. it hasn't joined the group that they're really keen to mm. hold, clearly. It's not one that we're sort of seeing uh, you know, Afterpay has been in the top 10 for literally years now. Mm. Split It uh, and Zip were very popular for a while. Zip's been really popular the last few months and Split It's dropped away, which has been quite interesting. And then we saw OpenPay and PushPay and all of these other variations, you know, popping in and out. Uh, Zip has sort of maintained a fair bit of activity. Afterpay has become a sell, which is mm. interesting. So people who were quite enthusiastic to take profits at $90, pretty happy to take profits in the 70s as Gosh, well. Gosh, okay, very telling. Uh, fast week. Last Friday was the first day of the sell-off here in Australia. Mm -hmm. We had it overnight in Wall Street the day before. Since then, we've had three or four days of reasonably heavy selling. Mm -hmm. How have your investors reacted to what's been happening in the US? So most of our investors really love a sell-off. They take it as an <laughs> opportunity to buy. So a lot of them have cash on the sidelines. We know that our cash book is back to record levels again. We've got investors sitting there waiting for an opportunity to buy. They've taken profits on heaps of things that have done really well. So they've been waiting for this opportunity for a pullback. The two things that they got really excited about this week were CSL and Woodside. Mm. So both of them, when they came off, they got really aggressively into over 90% buy, which is, that's mm. a lot. That's a really enthusiastic buy. We don't usually see that kind of split. So they were diving into those and loving it. And then going internationally, it's been really, really interesting. So it's been Tesla for months, right? <laughs> we've been talking about Tesla and Tesla and Tesla and Tesla. Whether all of our retail investors understood or not that a large part of the driver for the share price appreciation was the expectation that it would be included in the S&P 500, mm. I'm not sure. Mm. We've talked about it and published articles about it and tried to ensure that people knew partly that it wasn't part of the S&P 500. When you look at a company of that magnitude, that it's going in in the top 20, potentially the top 10, depending on what's happening with the price on that day, which is could be anything at the moment, that's an astonishing thing to see happen. So this real run up in the price was the expectation that an $11 trillion US market was gonna to have to start buying this thing that was already enormous. So we saw this massive run up. All of our investors have loved buying it during that period and holding it. It got sold off. It was up, It was off 21% during market open. It was off in the aftermarket both days when it wasn't included. What was really interesting was Teradyne and Etsy were included mm. in the S&P 500 and suddenly they popped into our bars. Ah. So people were happy to buy those. Understanding, so clearly there is some understanding right. of how the market is comprised or how the index is comprised. So they started buying those two stocks. Tesla, they loved it when it was sold off. So I'm obviously sure. we had some investors who'd been hanging out for an opportunity to buy it when it's down 25% or so, they were happy to jump in. So we saw a lot of buying of Tesla, but it's been moving around like crazy, right? It's been a big week. It has been a big week. Another uh, company which has been a big week for is Drone Shield. A big mm -hmm. couple of weeks actually with placements and exciting uh, partnership news. 
Your investors have been looking at that quite closely. Yeah, that has popped in. Again, one that we've not seen before. It got a lot of attention for a small cap, so very much like brain chip to see something like this just rocket up the list was quite amazing. Very small trade sizes, which is not surprising when we see something really new come in. It tends to be smaller, more active traders who kind of take a look at these sorts of things. So I'll tell you next week whether it's still there. <laughs> and my Friday partner in crime, David, is not with me today, so I'm going to ask a question on his behalf. You can probably guess what it is. Mm. Nicola. What's was happening with Nicola? Dying to talk about it with him. This is so funny. So Nicola sort of dro- drifted away for a while there. And then anyone who was paying attention, Tesla's had all of this bad news, not making the S&P 500 when it was so widely anticipated. The other piece of bad news they had was that Nicola, which was sort of seen as a bit of a speculative alternative, it's an electric truck manufacturer, mm-hmm. GM has taken an 11% stake. This is very, very big news. They get all of GM's technology Mm. for free effectively, which is marvelous. And GM gets a bit of kind of sexy marketing, like Mm. look at us, we've got this cool funky new car thing happening. Um, We're the new Tesla, despite the fact we're GM. Um, And it rocketed straight back up the list, right? It was back in the top five. People are really excited about it again. We already had investors who'd been following it closely and that kind of news gets them really, really keen. The other thing was Neo was back in as well. (laughs) So it's back to the electric cars again. That's what everybody's excited about in international markets. Well, probably a good sign. Electric cars are are exciting a topic more broadly away from investment markets as Mm -hmm. well. So uh, good to see that your clients are on the money there. Gemma, once again, thank you so much. Have a terrific weekend and we'll see you next Friday. You too. Thank you.